Hello, educators. I gotta make sure I'm in the right group. Um, my name is Ashley Patrick. I am the nutrition and wellness coach for this group, and I am super excited to share on this topic that I picked for today. Um, I'm coming in a little late as I just got done with my workout, so it actually works perfect because. Sorry, it's like I gotta refresh my page. Um, it works out perfect because that's what I'm gonna talk about is movement, and there I am. Perfect. All right, so here we go. So there have been a lot of studies thrown out over the years about movement and just the world that we're living in. A lot of stuff is becoming like there's robots and all these machines that are taking over our jobs or certain things from grocery shopping to work to travel to whatever right so there have been many studies out there and the one of them that i looked at the most recent one it said if you add up all the hours in a day that you spend sitting you end up losing about 20 years of your life to sitting and that's not even like sleeping this is just throughout the day sitting at a desk sitting at the doctor's office, um, just sitting watching TV at home, just anything like that, okay? Sitting at the bonfire. I love bonfires around here in Minnesota. So um, that's a huge chunk of your life if you think about it. Like if somebody lives an average, say you live 80 years, really you spent 60 of them moving and the other 20 sitting around. Um, so move your body is really good for you and we know not only just mentally to get your mind off of things and to re relieve stress and anxiety and stuff like that but it also releases resistance and it helps your body and your organs and that work properly um and your joints like, my background is I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was 15 years old. I'm 29 now, so I've had it almost half my life. And I, uh, one of the main things I got with that, other than, like, the stomach issues, is my joints. I would have joint pain, joint stiffness, just achy joints all the time when I was late teens, early 20s. Um... So I always told myself that when I work out or when I move, it hurts more. So movement is not good for me. False. Motion is the lotion for your joints. Let me repeat that. Motion is the lotion for your joints. So what I noticed when I started with just yoga, not even like I wasn't sweating in my workouts or anything, and I'll get into that too, but when I started moving and doing yoga by day three of just doing about 25 to 30 minutes of yoga... In my program, by day three, like, my knee joint pain was reduced a lot to the point where I didn't have to wear my knee brace anymore. Um, and then now from then, I don't have joint pain. I haven't had any for months now. And usually about fall, winter time is where my joints start getting achy, like my elbows and my knees and everything. But I haven't had that. So, motion is the lotion for your joints. Um... Another thing, too, is dying is basically the combination, I know this sounds harsh, but dying is basically the combination of dehydration and getting stiff. So as we get older and as things are created to make our life easier, we move less and people start having these achy joints and feeling stiff and all this at a younger age than our great-grandparents did, okay? Um... In less than two generations, this is another study, um, in less than two generations, physical activity has dropped by 32% in the U.S. And that comes with all of the machines and everything in our life to make our life easier, right? So if you think about it, machines do majority of our work for us. Um, and what we're doing in our leisure time is not enough to replace that movement that we've lost from machines doing it, okay? So, I'm going to share a few things that can help you, um, what is there, three simple things that you can do 
um, to help you get more movement in your life and make it more consistent. And this does not mean you have to get a gym membership and go join a gym or do at-home workouts or anything like that. Those are definitely options. Um, but this is just starting simple, especially if you're not working out right now. You're not going to want to go throw down hundreds of dollars and do something that you can't and don't know how to make consistent in your life, right? So here we go. Um, a couple of pointers I want to point out before I share those things is... First off, you need to trust your body. You need to trust your body that it is stronger than you think, it is more flexible than you think, and you need to push it. Um, you need to push yourself to the limits when it comes to workouts and different things um, and be willing to push your comfort zone a little bit. So I don't know if you've heard the saying, I'm sure we all have, but getting out of your comfort zone is where you grow. So if you don't get out of your comfort zone and do these simple things, um, you're not going to notice much growth or much change in your body and how you feel, um, and how your skin starts to look and all the things that come from just move it, movement, right? Excuse me. Um, so listen to your body. Don't push it too hard. Obviously, if you are having pain, um, exercise is not meant to be painful. So you need to be careful, even if it's just walks. Um, but exercise is meant to make you feel good mentally and physically, but also to make your organs function correctly. You're going to notice that you have a little more energy. Your skin's going to start getting clearer. Um, you're just going to mentally feel better about yourself. You're going to feel less stressed. So that is stuff that you get from exercise. Um, you do not want pain. Obviously, some of your muscles are going to be sore, but there's a difference between pain and soreness, okay? There's a difference between a pulled muscle and building muscle. So just listen to your body above all. Um, and as I go through my health journey, obviously I listen to myself with my recent surgery and my stomach issues. I, I push myself, but not to the point of breaking. So listen to your body and its response, and that is going to go a long, long way. Um, the second is to move in all three planes. So if you see people moving, like if you go to the gym, a lot of times they move forward and back. Um, it's not often that people will move side to side just because a lot of the workouts you think about are like lunges, like straight forward, straight back, right? Um, but a lot of movements, there are a lot of movements out there that help you with the side to side and your body really does need the twisting and the side to side motion to build it, but also to help with flexibility and just strength and your organs need that twisting motion for them to work properly too. So when you start movement, obviously one of them a lot of people do is like walking, like walking front and back is good. But once you get your arms in it, your body, your core has a little bit of twist that's going, right? So instead of just walking with your arms down, you get your arms up, and I'm on a swivel chair. That's why I'm really moving. But when you get your arms up, like your body is doing, your shoulders are doing the twist, and your core is twisting. And the core is where most of our organs are, right? So that's good. Um, and there. That's it. So, and then the third, obviously, is to make sure you're breathing while you're moving. I was always one person that would hold my breath when I would do workouts and my face would turn really, really, really red and I wouldn't be able to go as long because I was like, I was holding my breath. I was ultimately like feeling like I was suffocating because I was holding my breath. So I wasn't able to move. So here's three things that you need to do to like not want to do. These are three things you need to do to help you get movement into your life um, and starting just little by little. Okay. So first is start with small wins. Like I said, walks. Walks are especially good for women who tend to have like stiff joints, hips, and carry a lot of stress in your glutes. Um, so walking is really, really, really good. Also using your arms, like I said, for that twisting motion. Um, as long as you don't overdo it, you're gonna, you'll see the results of walking, right? So you're probably gonna notice that, and this isn't like, this is non-scale victories. I'm not talking about weight loss or 
anything like that. I'm not talking about the scale. So the small ones you're going to see is that you're going to feel less stressed when you get out in nature. You're one with nature. Maybe you have time to put your phone down. Sorry, my screen's dirty. Um, maybe you have time when you go on the walks, leave your phone at home. Okay. Leave your phone at home. Maybe go out with your kids or spouse or grandkids or neighbors, meet your neighbors out for a walk, bundle up. If you live in the North Northern States where it's freezing out and snowy, but um, try it after Christmas. If you are getting together for a Christmas dinner, instead of going to sit down on the couch because you overate and sit there and like, oh my gosh, my stomach hurts so bad, move. Get your butt out and move. Go for a walk, um, especially if you bring kids with and bring them out sledding or whatever it is. As you're outside, you're not focusing on, wow, my legs sure hurt or wow, I'm building muscle right now. Like, you, no, uh-uh. Um, pay attention to them and you won't even notice how far you went on a walk or how your body feels if your legs are getting sore or you feel tired. You're not going to notice that as quick as if you were just watching them and distracted. Okay. Um, so walks are really good. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel your breathing will improve. You're going to be able to, like I said, your skin will start improving. Your energy will rise. Not instantly. You don't just walk, go for a walk one day and then all of a sudden you've lost 20 pounds, your skin's clean and you have a ton of energy. It's got to be consistent, right? Um, but you're going to start living a better life. You're going to start noticing things, a little more gratitude. You're going to have less stress like that. So another thing too where I started was yoga. So as I shared, I started yoga and by day three my joints felt better but it also yoga has a lot of twisting moves and stretching and you're going to notice your flexibility is going to be a lot better um but you're also going to notice that you may not be sweating by the end of the workout but you're gonna have you will have weight loss with it like you'll lose inches um i did when i did yoga i did about 25 to 30 minutes a day five days of the week and then the weekends was Saturday Sunday was just stretching like a 10 minute stretch or a 10 minute ab workout or something you know just 10 minutes um but you don't need to be dripping with sweat to have results or to consider it exercise I didn't know that sounds crazy I didn't know that when I started I thought I'd have to be dripping with sweat and just feel gross and look gross um in order to have results not true okay so start with the small wins. That's number one. Number two, reward that will keep you doing it. So something small, I'm not saying like you need to go and buy something or spend money on you for a reward. Like if I work out five days this week, I get to eat a piece of cake. Like that's not helping you. It's really not. Um, so something small and simple such as quality time, like I said, with your spouse or family hands-free maybe you get to notice your um stress level or your if your brain is constantly going especially this time of the year um when you're off from work and then now you're going you don't want to go back to work totally stressed out right um but you're going to be sitting here everybody thinks their mind always goes right we're always thinking about what's going on tomorrow what's going on later what's going on in 15 minutes whatever so if you can take a minute to go away from reality and just go for a walk or maybe go on your treadmill or maybe do some stretches some jumping jacks something 10 to 15 minutes start there um you're gonna you're gonna feel a lot better too so it's you're gonna see the reward that you're okay let me back up the reward from that is that you're gonna notice you feel a lot better you feel less stress in those times maybe you notice after you do your workout you are a little more excited for dinner or the conversation with your spouse or spending time with your kids. I notice when I am stressed out, I do a workout and it's like a whole nother day. Like I just press, press start over, you know, in my day. So that's the other thing. Last thing, third, that we always hear, I've said it multiple times, but don't compare yourself to others. So this one has hit hard for me. Um, so I'm not old at all. Like I will be 30 this next year. Coming into 2022, I will be 30 in June. And one thing, like 
I've heard all the things about once you hit 30, your hormones change and it's different to lose weight or stay active. Like you got to switch up your routine and that's totally fine, right? Like you need to, instead of comparing yourself to somebody on Facebook or maybe even a neighbor who's been working out for years and maybe they're 20 years younger than you or whatever, don't expect you like yourself to be at their level as far as workouts or routines or whatever. Um, you're not 20 anymore. I had to tell myself this. I'm 29, so I'm kind of 20, but towards the end. Um, but I'm not in high school anymore. I can't go to the gym and lift weights, like just pick up where I left off um, in high school. My body isn't meant to move that way. I have had children. I have had my disease progress. I've had surgery. Like there are things that have changed. And as you get older, things just change, right? Um, and you're not meant to move like that. You're not anymore. You're going to notice if you try to push workouts as hard as you did when you were in high school or even 20 years ago, um, that's when an injury occurs. Sorry, I lost my train of thought in my notes. Um, that's when your injury occurs or you're going to notice that your mental game might start struggling because you're trying to compare yourself to either somebody way younger than you or in different physical shape than you, or even you're trying to compare yourself to you 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, okay? 10 years ago, whatever. Time changes things, right? If you are consistently doing workouts and you are you've always been physically fit, then it's easier to compare yourself to maybe the last couple of years, right? But even as you get older, as you go further along, like things change, your body changes. Um, so exercise is not meant to be a mind game, like a mental struggle for you to turn and hate yourself and compare yourself to other people. Like that's not what it's about. So exercise and moving your body is meant to feel good and be somewhat enjoyable. It's not to be painful. It's not to be um, struggling with your own mindset. None of that. So the question that I want you to ask yourself is, uh, as you start working out, okay, are your workouts making you feel good or are they causing you more stress? Are your workouts... By the end of them, do you feel proud of yourself or do you feel like you could have done better and then you're just negative? Like, where are you as you're doing the workouts, okay? You might feel good because you're breathing better, but your body's aching. Well, that's not good. Aching should not be painful, right? Are you in pain? Have you pulled any muscles? Pay attention to that. It's something to be mindful about um, from day-to-day -day life and especially when you're adding in exercise Maybe you've noticed you've always had, or you've known you've always had lower back pain. Well, I have had lower back pain for many of my life, but it comes from my core. So as you strengthen your core, your back will feel better. I did not know that. A lesson learned as I started this. Um, but regardless of how you feel, regardless of your schedule, I want you to make a commitment to move every day. It does not have to be 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, okay? I want you to make a commitment to move more than what your day-to-day -day job is. So if you work eight hours and you're on your feet a lot, your body is used to that. So I want you to add maybe a 10-minute workout, maybe a 20-minute walk after work or during your lunch hour or at home, get on the treadmill if you have one. If you don't, get layered up and go outside. Um, go for a walk with the dog, throw the ball with the dog, run around with the kids, whatever it is. But I want you to be active and to not take the easy option every time it arrives, okay? So we live and move most, we live to move and mo must move to live. So remember that it is that simple. It is as simple as if you want to feel better, if you want to feel like you did in your 20s or whatever, you know, as life gets, as you go on, um, it's simply movement. I have watched my great, great grandparents. So I'm 29. My great, great grandma died at 102 about 10 years ago. So I was 19 when she died. Um, and there's one thing she always did 
she was not a very tall person ever. She was always just a little petite thing. She was always a homemaker. Um, she didn't work outside the house. She baked a lot of cookies and stuff like that. But one thing she always did, even after my great-great-grandpa died, is she could have had her kids run and get groceries for her and do that. But instead, she would walk from her house. She lived in town. And she lived about three blocks from the grocery store. And towards the end of her life, she was still going for walks to go get her groceries, even in the middle of winter. Um, so she would just go and take what she could. So every day, she would make a trip to the grocery store because she could not carry a lot. So she would start with, like, if she needed milk, she'd go up and grab milk and maybe bananas one day or milk and bread. And then the next day she would have her list and she'd bring just whatever she could carry. And she would walk to the grocery store and carry the groceries home. She didn't drive a car. She could have drove three blocks away. She didn't have me go and get them for her as like a 12-year-old kid running around. I walked by the grocery store all the time, you know. Um, she didn't have her kids run into town and just do a grocery haul once a week. Like she did what she could. She took her time to go and do it. Um, another thing she did up until, I think she was like a hundred when she stopped doing this, but she would do, um, every, I think two to three days a week, she would go to the pool and she would go swimming. So they had, um, classes in town. She would get a ride to that because it was about 20 miles from her house. Um, she wasn't that crazy. No. Um, so she would get a ride there and go two to three days a week and go swim in the pool. And pools are really, really good for you, especially if you do have, like, more back pain or joint pain and stuff like that. There are, like, bikes that you can hop on and ride in the pool. That's pretty cool. They have courses or classes like that. Um, so there's a bunch of different things. Look in your area, see what is offered, um, and go from there. And maybe it just means walking to your mailbox if you have a long driveway instead of driving walking to bring your garbage down once a week to the end of the driveway instead of hooking it on to the hitch of the truck and driving it down. I've done that a couple of times, not gonna lie. Um, and we don't have a long driveway. So what are things you could do to get a little more movement in your life and start where you are? Don't just commit to our workouts and lifting weights if you don't even do anything, you know? So that's what I've got for you. Um, we also have tis the season for New Year's resolution. So if workouts or nutrition and kind of mindset things are in your radar for the new year, if you want to find something, if you've always had the same New Year's resolution for the last 10 plus years and for some reason you always give up or end up quitting by February, March, if you want to work on um, making a plan, goals that you will, that will get you past the February, March deadline where everybody quits, you know, if you want to make it all the way through the year, I do have a free group going. It is starting on Monday. It is in my Healthy Ish with Ashley Facebook group. I will put the link in, the, in here in the comment. Um, for that, it is a free five day group. You're going to get a sheet to go with it for goal planning and we are going to go, I'm going to share some mindset things. We're going to do mindset check-ins. I'm going to do some goal planning, goal setting, tips or trip, trips, trips, tricks, <laughs> English, um, tips or tricks every day. I'm going to share one of those. So it's going to start Monday the 27th and go through Friday, which is New Year's Eve. So you'll be able to kick it off here on um, the first week and first day of January by next Saturday. So I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we will see you in here next week. All right, you guys have a good week.